Chris here, certified RV technician for Unique Camping and Marine. As an RV owner, you know that eventually you'll probably have to deal with odors. And so we're going to go over all of the different ways which odors can crop up, whether it's from the black tank or the gray tank. And we're going to have some visuals to help guide us along the way to get into and dive deep on how to get rid of the odors. And by the end of this, you should have an odor-free RV. Before we get started, I wanted to point out a resource which we have for you called thelineofduty.com. I'm there every day engaging with customers and campers. So if you have any questions or would like to speak with me directly, join me at thelineofduty.com. Let's get started. From the black water holding tank standpoint, you're going to be having the waste which is in there along with the paper. And when it comes to the gray water holding tank, it's going to be mostly a buildup of grease, which is inside of the gray water holding tank. And you'll be getting a smell which is sort of similar to garlic coming up from sinks and potentially the shower as well. What causes more grease buildup than anything else is leaving the gray water valve in the closed position. Now this would be something you would do if you are not at a full hookups campsite and you are dry do uh, boondocking or dry camping in general. What you're going to want to do to actually deep clean the gray water holding tank is going to be overall you'll want to fill it up with fresh water and Dawn Ultra. And when it's full with Dawn and uh, water, what will happen is since Dawn is a surfactant, it will start to get behind the grease so it can be rinsed out of the gray water holding tank. To really deep clean the gray water holding tank, you're gonna to wanna to add a full bottle of Dawn Ultra, rinse it into the gray water holding tank with the sink, let it sit overnight, and this process might need to be repeated up to two to three times in order to fully deep clean and get all of the grease buildup off of the walls and sensors inside the gray water holding tank. Another way which you can keep odors at bay, at least through the gray water holding tank, is going to be to put a P bend into the sewer discharge hose as it leaves the RV and before it enters into the sewer port if you are at a full hookups campground. When you add the P bend into the hose, you'll want to add some water into that low portion of the bend, which will create a vapor barrier and will stop sewer gases from traveling up through the sewer hose and back into the RV which can make your gray water holding tank smell like a black water holding tank. When it comes to odors coming from the black water holding tank, it actually starts long before it enters into, anything goes into the black water holding tank. You have microbes inside your gut which will be breaking down waste inside your stomach before it enters into the holding tank in general. Those are called anaerobic bacteria. And the anaerobic bacteria does not require oxygen to break down waste. But when you do use the toilet and you poop into the black water holding tank, those anaerobic bacteria are continuing to break down the waste which is inside the holding tank. And the smell which you're getting which smells very similar to methane, and it's not methane, is hydrogen sulfide gas. And as poop is being broken down, it's releasing the hydrogen sulfide gas and therefore getting you that methane-y smell. So when you are getting smells from your black water holding tank, oftentimes it's it, well, all of the time it is from the waste breakdown, not the actual waste itself. And so to eliminate the odors coming from the black water holding tank, oftentimes water is the best solution which you will have to eliminating these odors. So when it comes to eliminating the odors from the black water holding tank, we're not necessarily trying to get rid of the poop itself, we're trying to eliminate the hydrogen sulfide gas smell, which is being 
created from the waste breakdown. And we'll show you how to do that. Two ways to go about this. You can either replace the anaerobic bacteria with aerobic bacteria. And when you do that, instead of letting off hydrogen sulfide gas as the anaerobic bacteria does, the aerobic bacteria will send off water and CO2, which will displace the anaerobic bacteria and will keep the hydrogen sulfide from being smelled. Uh, the other thing which you could possibly do would be to use a holding tank treatment that simply wipes out all of the anaerobic bacteria inside of there. The problem with using a holding tank treatment which eliminates odors by killing everything inside of the tank is that unfortunately you will still have the waste build up instead of it breaking down at the same time. And the problem with that is that will lead to uh, waste buildup, uh, clogs, and most certainly uh, sensor issues. And then you will need to follow up the holding tank treatment, which was getting rid of the odors, with something which will then clean out and clear out the rest of the holding tank to keep you from having the buildup of waste and clogs and sensor issues as well. So we've discussed the culprit of the odors coming from the black water holding tank, which is hydrogen sulfide gas. Now the problem with using a highly fragranced holding tank treatment is that you're essentially just trying to cover up the smell of the hydrogen sulfide gas rather than taking care of it at its core. And so because of this, some people do enjoy the smell of the uh, holding tank treatments, which use heavy fragrance to cover up the hydrogen sulfide smell, but we just believe that it's better to tackle it at its core. So while you're using the RV toilet, you're going to want to still do everything possible to keep that hydrogen sulfide gas inside the holding tank and not coming into the rest of the RV. And it's a uh, couple things which will help with that. Uh, starting with the gasket, which is right around where the water enters into the black water holding tank. If that gasket is damaged or is no longer watertight, what can happen is you can get that hydrogen sulfide gas seeping past it. Um, the other thing which we highly recommend you do with your RV toilet is always make sure that you have a base layer of water sitting inside the toilet bowl. This will work the same way that it does in a household toilet, creating a vapor barrier in between the RV and the holding tank. Uh, you will also know that if you have a damaged gasket, you'll know this because you'll have water which is you've added into the toilet bowl and then the next time which you go in to use the toilet and you don't have any more water in the toilet bowl the gasket is no longer watertight and needs to be replaced um, and we've got another video on that as well uh, but the the major two things to take away from this is that you want to have water in your bowl which will create that vapor barrier and a working toilet valve gasket which is keeping the water in the toilet bowl. We've already gone over how to keep it at bay through the toilet, but inside the tank, we can also do some steps here which will reduce that hydrogen sulfide uh, inside the tank itself. And the best answer is water. If you have enough water to cover over the waste, then you will not have that hydrogen sulfide smell. It's very similar to using a porter potty in that regard because when you are in a porter potty and there's no there's nothing above the liquid line it doesn't smell terrible as soon as there's waste accumulated above that liquid line you start to get a very strong odor pretty much right away and it's the same thing with your black water holding tank the other thing is going to be making sure that your tank temperatures are in a cool setting so the best way to do this is to add cool water to the holding tank, which will lower the temperature overall because hydrogen sulfide gas tends to be more prevalent in a hot tank. So making sure that you keep the tank itself cool with cool water 
is going to also reduce the amount of hydrogen sulfide gas. Keeping the water levels as far as temperature is concerned at 85 degrees or below is going to help mitigate the hydrogen sulfide gas. So if you're camping in weather which is warmer than 85 degrees, just plan on using more water than you would uh, say at a cooler temperature and that will help to keep that hydrogen sulfide down. Another place where odors can come from is when you're pulling your RV out of storage. Typically this happens after you have not completely cleaned out the black water holding tank, leaving some either residue or residual waste behind inside the holding tank itself. And over the amount of time which it's been sitting in storage, it's essentially just baking and turning into a hard surface of waste and paper. And with that being said, you're typically going to get an odor from it eventually. So in order to avoid this, uh, we always recommend rinsing very thoroughly, like even more than you think that you need to rinse when it comes to cleaning it out before putting it into storage. And if you're in an ideal circumstance where you can uh, not have freezing temperatures, we actually recommend using Unique Store It, which will allow you to continue cleaning the holding tank. Now you're going to want to use plenty of water during this process as well. And uh, using the Store It, it will continue to clean the inside of the holding tank. And that will leave you odor free when you go back to camp uh, the following time. To give you a better idea as to where waste can get um, hidden inside of a holding tank right before you put it into storage, we've got the uh, holding tank here split in two. And if you look at this side here, you can see this molded ledge, which is where the RV holding tank sits on the frame rails. And what can happen here is even though you've rinsed out this area significantly, there can still be things on this little ledge here, which can lead to odors in the future. You're going to want to make sure that when you're rinsing out the black water holding tank before putting it into storage, you fill this all the way up so all of the water is able to get up and over this ledge and therefore actually get all of the waste out of the holding tank. So the final place where we're going to be mitigating the hydrogen sulfide gas is done actually up here on the roof at the vent cap. Um, when it comes to the ventilation system of a black water holding tank, there's a pipe which runs down into the holding tank at the bottom of the RV and it vents up right here at the top. And that will allow the hydrogen sulfide gas to escape out of the roof at a much more pleasant place than inside of your RV itself. Now, one quick thing about the cap here is that it will still not work great if you are under close hanging trees or under a berm or something like that, and you can still get a pretty significant hydrogen sulfide gas smell if that's where you are parked for that time. So always try to make sure that you have your RV set in a place where this vent will not become blocked. Otherwise, it will back up inside of the black water holding tank for sure. So let's talk about how to ensure that your vent is working properly in order to prevent hydrogen sulfide gas. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that it is free of any kind of debris which might be around it. Uh, in Colorado here, we get a lot of cottonwood tree buildup, which can block off the vent itself. Uh, we've also heard from customers that they've had bird's nests built inside of their vent, and that will certainly block the airflow as it's trying to leave the RV. Um, there are also devices which you can install on top of this, which will then allow um, kind of a vacuum effect to occur where it's going to physically pull out the hydrogen sulfide gas, but that's kind of an ancillary item which you can install in there yourself. Uh, the other thing which you're going to want to do to make sure that your vent system is working properly is make sure that it doesn't have like leaves or anything like that built up around it as well, which would then again 
block off the airflow as it's leaving the, uh, the RV. Sometimes it can be a little crazy uh, when it comes to where these smells actually come from. In fact, one of our customers wrote to us stating that as they went up on the roof to check their vent cap to make sure that it was free of debris, they pulled the cap off only to discover that the hole had never been drilled from the factory in order to allow the vent to actually vent through the roof. So um, it's pretty wild, some of the stories which we've heard from our many customers, and it's just worth getting up on the roof of your RV from time to time just to make sure that you don't have any kind of debris or clog forming in your vent cap, which will certainly lead to um, odors inside the RV. Okay, so let's run back through the ways to prevent getting odors inside of the RV. The first thing you're going to want to make sure you have well in hand is that you're using plenty of water in the toilet bowl to work as a vapor barrier. And you're also going to want to make sure that the gasket is also operating in a way which will keep a watertight seal. And you'll know that because when you put water into the toilet bowl for your vapor barrier and it drains away or it disappears by itself, it's time to replace the gasket. Moving back inside of the RV holding tank, you're also going to want to make sure that you have plenty of water inside of the RV black water holding tank, which is going to cover over the layer of waste which is inside there. This is going to work very similarly to a porter potty where if anything's below the level of the liquid, you're usually relatively odor free. And if anything's above the water line, then you're going to get odors in general. The other thing when it comes to the black water holding tank is making sure that you have plenty of water in there to control the temperature. You wanna keep the temperature at least below 85 degrees and adding plenty of cool water inside of the black water holding tank will certainly achieve that. You will also want to avoid putting the RV into storage with any residual waste which is inside of the holding tank. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you have rinsed it uh, completely and thoroughly in order to make sure that you get any waste or paper buildup which might be existing on any of the ledges or anything like that on the inside of the holding tank. The next piece of the puzzle is going to be making sure that your vent line is clean and that's easily done by climbing up onto the roof of the RV and visually inspecting it from time to time just to make sure that there's no critters who have made a home inside of there or that there's not been any leaves or anything like that which might be blocking the vent, which will certainly lead to some uh, odors inside the RV if it is blocked. Finally, if you're able to avoid using a strong fragrance holding tank treatment which simply masks the odors, uh, it's best to try and tackle the hydrogen sulfide gas at its source, and ideally that's used with a bacteria and enzyme-based holding tank treatment, which is the gold standard of holding tank treatments. All right, so we've covered a lot in this video, and uh, hopefully you guys have learned quite a bit. Um, we also recommend using the unique method uh, that goes right in line with everything which we spoke about today. And uh, with the unique method, it's 50% process and 50% the correct product uh, when it comes to our recommendation for the gold standard of Blackwater holding tanks. We highly recommend using Unique's RV Digest It Plus. And if you follow the unique method, you will be odor free in your camping experiences. This is Chris signing off for Unique Camping and Marine, and I hope that we'll see you on the next one.